In this video, I will demonstrate simple network construction using Nango. The example I will use is a neural integrator. This is a network that is used to store information stably over time. If you look along the left-hand side of Nango, you see a palette of icons that can be used to construct networks. Whenever we're beginning a model in Nango, we have to start with an empty network, so I will drag the network icon and drop it into my empty space. It is asking for a name, so I will call this integrator demo. Clicking OK, Nengo constructs an empty network for us. In order to do anything interesting, we need to add neurons into our network so we can grab an ensemble and drop it into the empty network. Again, it is requesting information, so I will call this the integrator population. It's asking for the number of neurons or nodes that we would like in this population. We'll leave that as 100. Asking for the dimension of the variable to be represented by those 100 nodes. I will leave that as 1, as we would like it to represent a scalar value. It's asking for the kind of neuron model that we would like to be used. I will again leave this as the default, a leaky integrate and fire neuron, which is a simple spiking model of a neuron. There are several parameters that we can set, but I will leave these again at their default. And finally, it's asking for the radius. This determines the maximum value of that variable that's being represented by these neurons. Again, I will leave this as 1. If you would like other information about what each of these parameters is for, you can click the question mark nearby and additional information will be provided. Click OK and those neurons are then generated for us. We can zoom in on those neurons by using our scroll wheel or we can drag them around in order to organize our network. For the remainder of this demo I will simply maximize this window since it's the only network that I will be using. We can also double click on this population of cells to see each of the individual nodes in here. But again, I will just be treating this as a population for this demonstration. In order to get our nodes to do something interesting, we need to put input into them. So if we return back to our palette, we can see an icon called termination. This is a method for introducing inputs into neurons in a population of cells. So I'll drag the termination and drop it on my integrator population. And I will now need to define this set of inputs. I will call it input simply. It will have a dimension of 1 since we are working with a scalar integrator. And then we have a postsynaptic time constant, which currently is set to 0.1 seconds or 100 milliseconds. The postsynaptic time constant is the decay rate of the postsynaptic responses in these cells. I will set it to 0.1 to simulate NMDA-like receptors. As we describe on the website, the particular weight that we would like for a neural integrator will be equal to 0.1 or the same as the postsynaptic time constant that we just defined. So I'll set that to 0.1 and click OK. Click OK again. And we can now see an input here. We can think of this as a set of synapses, which will act in the way that we defined and that we can now connect things to. Of course, we need another set of synapses for a recurrent connection if we want to implement an integrator. So we'll drag a second termination, drop it. We'll call this the recurrent connection or recur. It again will also have an input dimension of 1. But as we describe elsewhere, this weight must be set to 1 because we would essentially like to take the information that is currently in the network and project it back into the network because we'd like to store it over time if there is no additional input. I click OK. Again, we will have a 100 millisecond postsynaptic time constant and click OK. So now we have another set of synapses on these cells. And this one, since it's a recurrent connection, we will take the output from this population of cells and connect it onto the input in the same set of cells. We can think of what, what is happening when I take this icon and I'm dropping it on this recurrent connection is that all of the connection weights between neurons in this population have been computed for us by Nengo. Those connection weights will implement the dynamics we have defined, which in this case is a simple integrator. And finally, to drive this network, we need to actually put some input into it. So I will take a generic input, this f of t icon on the side, and put it in my network. We can then define what we would like that function to be. We click Set Functions, and there are several that we can choose from. But in this case, I would just like a step. So I will call this a piecewise constant function. Click New. Now for my step function, I must tell it at what time I would like it to turn on and what time I'd like it to turn off. So we have two numbers to define. So we'll say we'd like it to turn off at 100 milliseconds, or rather on, and we'd like it to turn off at 200 milliseconds. Save that. And then we also must tell it what values we would like it to take on before, during, and after that step. So before and after, we'll leave a 0. And during, 
I'll set this to be equal to 5, which should take us to about half height. Click OK, create that function, click OK and OK again, and then we have that function generated for us, which will now generate that step and connect it to the input on these cells so we can drive those cells with a step input in the variable. Now it's taken me some time to construct this network, largely because I've been talking, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to reconstruct the same network without talking just to show you how rapid network construction can be. To remove a network, we can right-click on it and select Remove Model and say yes, so that just deleted the network I had constructed. So let me begin and construct it again. This time without talking so much. Drop my neurons in, use all the defaults. I would like a termination on here called Recurrent. You can see that I'm taking advantage of the fact that Nengo remembers the last thing I did. I want an input. This is going to have a different weight equal to the postsynaptic time constant of 0.1. OK, I would like to connect that as a recurrent. I would like an input. I would like these functions to be equal to what they were before. So, so another step function. And then I can drag and drop. And I'm done. In the next video, I will show how to simulate this network.